So some of you who are already familiar, you know that we run this topic, we talk about a given task, limit it as per PMP exam content outline, and after that we take queries related to this task or something beyond this particular task. So same format, same style we are going to follow today as well. So here is your task 13. Just to remind, the PMP exam is around exam content outline and we have different different number of tasks in a domains. They, they are grouped under domains and in the people domain you have 14 tasks and out of those 14 tasks in this session we are picking up the task number six which is called build a team. Now build a team, appraise the stakeholder skills, deduce project resource requirement, continuously assess and refresh team skills to meet project objective and maintain the team and the knowledge transfer. So building the team is a continuous process. The whole 14 tasks of people domain are directly or indirectly addressing the issue related to team development, the Tuckman ladders, leadership, conflict management, supporting the team, creating self-organizing team, all those kind of tasks are there, servant leadership, all those things are, are around building the team. But here we are focusing on something which is defined under this task number six. So please don't interpret that this is the only thing PMI expect from a project manager in order to build a team. There are many other leadership and, and soft uh, skills behavior which is expected from project manager as a part of people domain. But here it is a little technical limitation where we are focusing on a given task and subtask. They call it enabler. So build a, a team. Now, in this particular, if I arrange these four enablers, I can say that how they make us uh, work. As usual, I remind you back that 12 principles, if you have never seen these 12 principles of project management, you may want to check our videos on 12 principles. PMI is not going to ask you a specific question asking you, is this a PM principles or is it a right PM principle like that? but you are expected to behave as per these PM principles. So knowing the mindset of these project management principles are good. And here you see clearly talking about create a collaborative project team environment. It's all about building the team, demonstrating leadership, engaging with stakeholder. So many of these uh, principles, which we have been referring again and again in our people domain, remains relevant for this task, which is also a build a, a team. Now look at four sub. Uh, enablers, they call it, or I call it subtasks, just to clarify that the things. So we can say that, yes, we need to find out project resource requirement. Yeah, after that, I need to ensure that I check what is our current skills and what is our desired skills. I continuously keep assessing that, and I need to continuously support knowledge transfer, and I keep appraising the skills all the time. So as a project manager, I start with identifying what kind of resource requirement I have and I ensure that my people and resources are well maintained and we are making best use of it. So that these are the four enablers which are coming from build a team. Let's go one by one. So deduce a project resource requirements. You don't have to uh, relate and, and get into this much detail uh, just for understanding this particular task. But if you have been through the project management studies already, you understand the project management fundamentals, then this conversation might be useful for you. So what is my idea? My idea as a project manager is I need to figure it out what kind of resources I need, how many quantity I need, what location I probably they will work from. There could be some other attributes which will help me is in coming up with the resource requirement. As a target, I can say I may need to make a resource requirement matrix or resource requirement table. Here I'm just showing you an example, but so that you can start relating to it. The resource requirement may have a columns like type, description, quantity, location, uh, remarks, maybe a duration, how long you need, you need 100% or you need some part-time resources. So we need to come up with this result. Now, how do I come up with this result as a project manager? I have a new project to start with. So when I look at my first week of my project uh, uh, related responsibility, I have some supporting material, I have a supporting stakeholder, and those things can help me in finding out what kind of resources I need. Yeah, And that is my first task as a project manager in this particular uh, uh, build a team uh, section. So I may look at my project charter, project charter may give me sufficient details. Sometimes project charters are very detailed, depending upon the type of project you are working on. They may tell you what, how many people you will get, what kind of skill set they will have. Sometimes they are at a high level, but it gives me some information which helps me in identifying what kind of people, machine, material resources I will need in this particular project. So I will study the project charter. 
I may go behind the project charter. What created the project charter? Probably the project charter is coming because of a contract. If my project is triggered because we as a company is, is in agreement with someone so that there is a contract and the contract defines what we should do and what is a, a kind of things we need to deliver at deliverable details and other and studying that contract can probably help me in identifying what kind of resources I need for my project execution so I can study it. Either I have a contract or I may have a business case. So business case is something which is a strategic projects. There is no external person telling us to do this, but as an organization, we want to take some initiative forward and that's why we have a project there. So I may study that particular project uh, 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 information, which is coming out of a business case. Business case is, is a business document. It is not a project document. Business case is not created by project manager, but it is something which might be done by your portfolio group, but it is something which is a reason behind your project. So be it a contract or a business case helps me in identifying what kind of resource requirement I probably have. I may look at my environmental factor, what kind of environment we work in, what kind of automation is, is possible, what kind of people we have, what kind of organization philosophy we have for working with the project. For example, some organization are more outsource oriented, some organizations are in-house oriented. So I need to understand that. I may need to take an advice from experts. So some stakeholders which are ex identified in my project charter, some stakeholders which are there in my business case, as per my organization, there are some designated experts, technical experts who need to be consulted about. I may go to them and ask them what is their opinion about what kind of resources we may need. There could be many uh, experts. I may need to accumulate that information. I may need to create a breakout session or I say brainstorming session with them so that we can come up with what kind of resources we need. I may use organization historical learning so my company might have some templates, you know, these kind of project requires usually these kind of, of a resource and skill set based on their previous project. Or I may have some lesson learned register from your previous project. I may have some project report which might be similar to this project in my organization and I may take reference from it. As far as PMB exam is concerned, we go with an assumption that my organization is in this project management stuff for a while and we do have some historical data available rather than we are just jumping on to uh, something new all the time. So we take all those references from there. So based on that, I create that, okay, I need this kind of machine. I need this kind of, of material. So here, like I am saying that I need a 20, 50 laptops. I need a zero uh, software, 100 licenses. I need a XX type or YY type of engineer, 20. I need a survey analyst for three. So whatever, whatever is relevant in your case, with the help of all these, you may have some other uh, uh, inputs as well, depending upon the type of environment you work. But just to say that as a project manager, I need to come up with resource requirement. Now, what do you do when you have this kind of table with kind of resource requirement where you put it in a project management context? So you may put it in a resource management plan. That's a one possibility where you talk about your resource requirement, which may initiate something called resource calendar to start with yeah, as you start acquiring people. But that could be a place where you put it. Or you may have some other uh, artifacts, especially if you are working in the agile or hybrid manner, where you may not want to create a document called resource management plan. You may have some other things. You call it project team requirement, or sometimes you may have a team charter where you list out who all people will be working with you. So somewhere as per your project context, I need to identify the resource requirements. From PMP exam perspective, you should understand this is your task. You don't have to rely on a particular document that this is the document I have to create. You may create resource management plan, you may not. That is perfectly okay. But when the resource management plan is coming as an option, you understand it can contain my resource requirement. And I need to understand, I need to brainstorm, I need to think about the current requirement, my project objective, as well as all about my future, uh, my past historical data. And based on that, we are uh, 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 focusing on, on identifying our resource requirement. So this is the first thing deduce project resource requirements and resources from project management perspective could be material, could be people, could be licenses, could be machines, could be rented machine, could be owned machines, anything, anything which is needed in order to achieve project objective, that term is called resources. Yeah, so that's the first subtask in the build a team. So now you've got things with you, you got people, you got machines and you have some understanding. Now you want to go forward and focus on more people. So appraise stakeholder skills, that's the second subtask which we are taking here that okay, after having 
uh, my stuff uh, with me. I, I understand what kind of resources I need. Now I probably focus on stakeholders and see what kind of skills they have, what kind of desired skills we need, and what should we do in order to reach to a desired level. So again, I'm just showing an as an example, skill matrix. So you may have a skill matrix or you may have some other mechanism, but the idea here is when I am appraising the stakeholder skills, I may want to list down some set of skills which are critical for my project. Yeah, and I may list down stakeholders, which includes team members as well, and may talk about what are their current skills and what are the desired skills. I may have a level one to three or level one to five, which may talks about basic capability or advanced capability. And, and I need to prepare this as a project manager. So I can say I can appraise what kind of skills people have and what kind of skills might be needed in order to achieve my project objective. So as a as an example, I may end up creating a skill matrix or I may have some other way of doing it, which is perfectly fine from a PMP perspective. So how do I figure that out? How do I understand what kind of skills people have and what kind of skills might be needed? So I may do networking, I may meet them, I may interact with them and understand. I do some kind of informal assessment by way of having communication with them. I may run a proper assessment, especially for a team members on all. I may have a technical assessment. I may have other soft skills uh, assessments to understand what kind of skills people have in order to achieve project objective. I may do interviews to selective stakeholders to understand their understanding of various areas so that we can find out their, their, their desired skill enhancement we need to do. We can conduct some surveys where people can do a self-assessment. We can look at a historical data also, what kind of work is done by which particular uh, uh, stakeholder. Sometimes we also have a resource directory yeah, in the organization, which talks about who are the people, what kind of skills they have already, yeah, and what uh, what is their uh, experience in those particular skills, especially for a team members. I may have that information readily available. So I may look at my resource pool information or resource directory, which can help me in understanding the current skills. After understanding, either with the help of survey, either way of, by way of taking uh, formal or informal assessment, or by looking at resource pool data, I come up with that, okay, this is the skill matrix which, which I, we have for our given set of people, and here are the gaps we need to work on. Now, how do I identify the gap? After that, I need to look at my project requirements also. So I understand my project requirement in a previous section where I have looked into various uh, re uh, documents like project charter and stakeholder expectation and the brainstorming with the experts. I understand these kind of competencies are needed and I see in my project team members and stakeholder, there are some competencies which are more, which are less, and I need to find out where are the gaps. So as a process of appraising stakeholder skills, as a project manager, I have a responsibility of understanding what skills and competency my stakeholder has, what skills and competency my project needs it, yeah? and if there are gaps, I need to take action, and I need to plan for those actions, and those actions could be training, mentoring, coaching, and maybe networking by way of creating knowledge sharing events so that people can learn from each other and, and find out and fill this particular gap. Yeah? So that is my role as a project manager. I need to understand my stakeholder skills, including teams, and come up with the action plan to take care of the gaps. So that's a sub second enabler from this particular task builder team. The third one is pretty much related to this, uh, the second one. It's like you focus on the same skill matrix, but all the time keep updating it. Yeah? So we are saying continuously assess and refresh the team skills to meet project needs. So the previous task was more linked to like you are doing the assessment in the first week of your project, maybe just to get started. And this one is that you are doing it on a regular basis. Every month you are figuring out where do we stand? What are the current skills of my team members and what are the new skills they need to acquire so that we can take actions and update our skill matrix. So more or less the same thing, but on a regular basis. Now, when we are doing regular basis, we can have informal or formal assessment. You can have a formal performance assessment where you have agreed upon goal and you are working with them and finding out what is working, what is not working and what new has to be acquired. We may have a list of future skills, which is a part of your current assessments. We may revisit the project skills requirement because environment keeps changing. As a project manager, I need to keep doing environmental assessment at various frequency. You can call it at a milestone level or at the retrospective level and find out what kind of skills might be needed in future. We need to balance the tech skills and soft skills. That's a reminder which is coming from an EMP exam perspective. We should develop people in a T-shaped professional, which means 
they should also develop some skills in their non-core competency areas so that they can work as a as a kind of a bottleneck or a removal of bottleneck resources whenever needed so we need to build multi-skilled professional that's a t-shaped skills development also i need to focus on I may do feedback, one-on-one feedback, team level feedback, team level assessment. We may run retrospective to understand where we are and what should we do next. Uh, in the predictive life cycle, we may do a lesson learned meeting. We may run some experiments, some proof of concept, some spikes in the case of agile world. In case of predictive world, also we may run some exploratory activities to understand what kind of skills we have and what kind of skill we need. We may check our project performance as well to understand what is working for us and what is not working. So retrospective lesson learns project performance is all about feedback on the current work. Yeah. So we look at how are we doing as per our current understanding of skills and, and requirement. And then we keep revisiting the future requirement of our project. So we need to ensure that we have competencies to meet our current targets, current goals. And we also build a capability to take care of future goals or future uh, 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 kind of skills which we need. Result, updating the skill matrix only. So we probably need to revisit and say these are the possible areas where we need to work on. And action, based on that, we will come up with a training plan. We may identify what kind of training individual has to go through. We may assign some mentors to them. Mentors could be internal mentor also. And we may need to come up with a coaching activity so that we can grow those uh, individuals in, in the desired skills. And overall knowledge sharing is something also which help us in creating the better understanding of what we are uh, uh, doing and how can we learn our future skills. So this is more or less related to the previous top uh, uh, enabler only, but this is more in a regular manner and we are bringing the retrospective lesson learns and frequent reassessment of it here when it comes to continuously assess and refresh the theme skills to meet project need. Just to keep in mind, we should focus on just in time skill development. The skill development should also be done in the format of cost benefit analysis. We should see that yes, this skill is needed next month, then we build it now. Exact next month or next week, it depends. But in general, we keep in mind, we want to have just in time skill development so that people can really apply it. If, if the question indicates probably after six months you need this skill, should you get the person trained today? The answer should be no. Yeah, we should, uh, we should be because in the six months things may change. And we may train the person right now, spend money, and probably that thing may not be uh, relevant. So we need to be a little uh, just in time, not too late, not too early. And we need to judge the question and the option in order to identify what is the right time for people to uh, enhance their skills which are coming in the future space. But yes, 101, goal setting, continuous performance assessment, collecting feedback, and, and coming up with a training mentoring plan is a day-to-day -day activity of the project manager. So that's the another idea from exam perspective. Now, final subtask, maintain team and knowledge transfer. So this is, uh, uh, you will see this theme again and again in your PMP content in a people domain space. So we consider knowledge as an asset. So we, and, and consider that your organization is, is maintaining these knowledges. Don't assume that your organization start the project as if they are first time doing it. They, they, you get something and they wake up and get start working on it. Don't work in that particular manner. You assume that my organization has a history. They have a learning of what works, what doesn't work, and they have a codified knowledge. And another job is I as a project manager has a role to grow that knowledge. Yeah? So my task is I contribute to the, the organization knowledge by way of adding my experience to it. At the same time, I need to ensure inside my project also the knowledge transfer is happening all the time. So we can say the knowledge has to be maintained at individual level, project level and organization level. So knowledge is an asset. The individual need to take care of their own assets, their own knowledge. They should have a better storage management. They should have a better searching of their ideas so that if they have worked on something before, they should be able to search it and build on top of it rather than reinventing the wheel all the time. Similarly, I need to ensure at my project level, we have sufficient discussion forum, lesson learns register, and continuous interaction amongst the people. And we manage our artifacts well, the storage, the configuration management. So at any point in time, people can find the right information. So that's a project level knowledge management. And I, as a project manager, also responsible for frequently scaling up my lesson learns, scaling up my, my learning at an org level so that my organization can take benefit from what is happening in our project. Yeah, so that's knowledge is an asset. 
Now, knowledge can be understood as an explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge. So explicit knowledge is something which can be codified. You can make video out of it. You can make text out of it. You can make a user manual from there, documentation. And that is where we you can keep maintaining and sharing. The tacit knowledge is something which is coming based on experience. People may not write about it. People may not think it is an important. But when you work with someone, you observe and you learn from it. So as a project manager, I understand that it is difficult to codify everything. And inside my project team, I must support that we have a tacit knowledge transfer as well. So I need to maintain the team is, is sharing their experiences with each other as well. How do I do it? Probably with the help of, of a job shadowing. That's a good idea to, to make that happen. Making people work together. So together as a group, we are doing some problem solving. Uh, together as a group, we are doing some kind of customer demonstration. So whenever I work with someone, I learn from that person and the person also learns from me. Putting up some kind of mentoring relationship inside the project team, formal or informal, can also help us in doing tacit knowledge transfer. So by default, you can use a shadowing or pairing as a good example of tacit knowledge transfer. So overall, our idea is whenever possible, we codify. And other thing is we are giving people an opportunity to interact with each other. So we may have a seminars where people can come network with each other that can uh, help us in doing explicit and uh, implicit or a, 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 a tacit knowledge transfer. We can set up some special groups like you may have design groups where people from design area come together and discuss their problems and the solutions. We may have a project manager special group where project managers from the organization coming and discussing things. That could be at an org level that if your project itself is big, you may have at a project level also. So maybe an electronic discussion forum, chat groups, WhatsApp groups or, or Slack group, depending upon what is your environment. But there is some interaction which can happen and people can share knowledge with each other. We can set up something called community of practice, which is an agile way of setting up a special group where we have a lot of knowledge exchange, which may maintain uh, some set of data and probably people can make best use of it and they can learn from each other. We can make people meeting with each other. We can have an electronic knowledge base also, like a help file, like a search base thing, uh, sometimes called knowledge base as, as a word where people can also find the information. So I, as a project manager, promote all these things. I ensure because I need to make sure people learn from each other. Why I'm doing it? Because I also have a goal that I need to de-risk and remove single point of failure. So I need to make sure multiple people know about the project so that in case one person is not available, other person can take it. So that's a one important thing. The second reason of doing knowledge transfer is we want to reduce the waste of reinventing the wheel. If someone has done something, why are we wasting the time? That's the second reason of doing knowledge transfer. The third reason is by doing knowledge transfer, we probably create creative solution. If I have learned something from something, I can probably build on top of it. So I want to increase the creativity of my project team environment. The fourth reason of doing knowledge transfer, there could be many more, I'm just sharing four. It's about project continuity as well. If someone leaves the project team and we want to ensure the project continues without getting interruptions, kind of related to single point of failure, for that also we need to have a good knowledge transfer. And building the skills of the people we have learned, the skills has to be developed. Skills is not only developed with the help of mentoring, coaching and training, the skills also get developed with the help of networking and working together. And that's why the knowledge transfer also plays a role. We can mix mentoring, training, knowledge transfer in the one activity also, but they could be separate activities as well. So that's it. It's all about your uh, task called lead a, a team, uh, build a team, not a lead a team, build a team. And uh, as I said, overall, the people domain tasks are pretty much interrelated. So it is difficult to point out that this is the only task which help us in building the team. So you probably want to watch our previous conversations on people domain and probably also want to continue watching to rest of the people domain uh, topics so that we get a better understanding. Mm -hmm.